Hi students, you're back with Ms. Koken finishing up the 7.1 notes on sampling distributions. As we continue to talk about the idea of bias, variability, and shape, we're going to think of the population parameter kind of as a bullseye. So it's the target that we're trying to estimate. If we are trying to estimate the average height of the high school students, 750 students at North Broward, then, then we will take a sample and find the average height of our sample. Let's say we take a sample of 70 students. Take a sample of 70 students and find the average, throw them back their, those names back in the hat, and then we take another sample of 70 students, find that average height, throw those names back in the hat, and we continue to do this. If we take multiple samples, what our goal is is to have, number one, estimates that are close to the population parameter or the true value and we also want all of the sample means to be close to one another to be accurate and to have low variability so bias is what happens when they're off the target if our samples are the target and I'm sorry if our samples are the arrows trying to hit the target and our target is actually the population parameter that we're trying to estimate as we continue to take samples, we said we want them close to each other and we want them hitting the target, hitting the center of the target. If they're off the target or the off, off center, I should say, we have high bias. If they're close to each other, we have low variability. This is the picture that we have in A. So we have a, a low difference. They're very similar to one another, the different sample values, but they're not anywhere near the population parameter or the true average height of high school students. Now sometimes the the sample values are all over the place. If they're all over the place then what we have is high variability. Now in illustration B you can see they are all over the place but if you look for the center of all of the samples it is the population parameter or the center of our target. So that means we have low bias it is centering around that population parameter but we have high variability. This is not desirable. The third illustration, C, we have both bad things. We have high bias, so it's far away from the target, the center of the target, and high variability. There's still kind of a cloud of estimate values. And in D, we have exactly the situation that we want. The, the low bias, so all of our sample values, our sample means are close to the population mean, and they're all close to each other. So we have low variability and no bias. That's the most ideal situation. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video so you can take notes on this. Turn the video back on when you're ready to continue. Okay, so sampling distributions can take on many shapes. The same statistic can have sampling distributions with different shapes depending on the population distribution and sample size. So what does this mean? This means that the shape of any distribution for a sample is going to, for the most part, mimic whatever the parent population looked like. So if you have a parent population that's highly right skewed, then your sample values are also going to look right skewed. Also, it depends on the sample size. So things will change as the sample size changes, the shape of the sampling distribution. We'll see more with this when we get into some problems and we actually look at some specific examples where we're taking samples of different sizes. Pause the video now so that you can read the example about the German tank problem on page 427. Students are asked to try to come up with a way to estimate the number of tanks, and this is something that actually did take place, and uh, it's the number of tanks on the, uh, the enemy side. So they, the students came up with the, the first four values that you can see, and of those values, they look uh, three of them look approximately symmetric, max, min, twice mean, and two median. Those look approximately symmetric, and they have relatively high variability. So what this means is if, there, if the allied forces were trying to estimate how many German tanks were out there, then we would see that we're just as likely to underestimate as to overestimate. And we have high variability, so we don't have necessarily a lot of confidence in our estimates. We look at the last example, though, partition. And partition is left skewed, and what this means, and that line, by the way, indicates the true number. So what what this means is we're more likely to 
overestimate than we are to underestimate and the variability is reduced. So if you're trying to figure out how many tanks your enemy has, you'd rather overestimate and be very, very well prepared than underestimate and perhaps be less prepared than you should be for a battle. So hopefully you understood that example. We're going to see a couple of others as we go through. This one is also related to exercise 19, so you may want to take a look at that now. Okay, so what have we learned in 7.1? A parameter is a number that describes a population. Remember, P for population, P for, for parameter. Very easy way to do it. And for parameters, we generally use Greek letters like mu. Sometimes we don't, though, like when we're talking about a population proportion and we use lowercase p. To estimate an unknown parameter, we use a statistic that's calculated from a sample. That would be something like an x-bar, the sample mean, and if we were to graph all of the sample means from many, many, many samples, we would end up, in fact, if we graphed every single one, we would end up with the sampling distribution of a particular sample size. The population distribution is the distribution of all the different values in the population for every single individual. The, the distribution of a sample is just taking a sample and then graphing it on a histogram or dot plot. Okay, so those are those three that we need to be able to distinguish. We have something called an unbiased estimator, or it could be a biased estimator. An unbiased estimator is when we're on that target when we take a sample and it's actually close to the population parameter that we're trying to estimate. If it's biased, it's off-center. It's far away from the population value. And the variability of a statistic is generally we're going to be looking at the standard deviation. We could be looking at the variance also. We want smaller spread, not larger spread. And in the next section, in section 7.2, we're going to be looking a lot at population, proportion, and sampling distributions for proportions. Remember that we're going to be using the normal approximation for p hat, and that's p hat, and that's going to be our, our sample value. So I'll see you again in 7.2, and hope you are ready to tackle some problems in 7.1.